Alrighty, a um, couple minutes in, we've got most people here, so I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, once again, welcome to the webinar for the Craft Brewery Startup Workshop, um, a program of Oregon State University. Um, I just wanted to let you all know, I think most of you have um, are either on a telephone or are using microphones, um, but they're all muted at the moment. And um, I think we will either unmute them at the very end at Q&A, or um, I'll just go ahead and have you type in any questions you might have in the chat box, which is just at the very bottom of the control panel. Um, so let's get started. Actually, let me double check and be sure that Roger is unmuted. Should looks, there we go. Roger is, should be unmuted now, um, who is my co-presenter. <laughs> Hi, Hannah, this is Roger. Hi, Roger. All right, so let's get going. Um, as I said, um, my name is Johanna Lounsbury, or Hanna. I'm a project manager at Professional and Non-Credit Education at Oregon State University. Um, and basically my role for this workshop is providing coordination and overseeing the workshop day-to-day -day activities. Um, I've seen this project from the very beginning and I will see it all the way through to um, I get to spend a week in Bend in September um, and hopefully meet some of you and the other workshop attendees. And then hopefully we get to keep this up for the next few years. I'm going to let Roger introduce himself right now as well. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, so I've been working as a business consultant for the last uh, 12 years now and also teaching in the School of Business and Economics at Michigan Technological University, uh, primarily in operations management, but also entrepreneurship and management as well. And I will be talking about the first two and a half days of the workshop, primarily focusing on the business plan and the business aspects of what you'll be doing in terms of your entrepreneurial venture. And I've worked with a variety of different business owners. I've been a home brewer for 20 plus, 20 some odd years. And uh, we've been wor working with uh, Leo Sharkey, who has a a lot of experience in business plan competitions and is also looking currently at a micro distillery business plan uh, as well as being a home brewer for the last 10. Alrighty. Thank you, Roger. Okay, so um, the agenda for today, we're just going to do a quick overview of uh, Oregon State University and professional and non-credit education. Um, I'm going to show you a little bio on the instructors and uh, go over a little bit of the workshop overview and course outcomes. And then I'm going to let Roger um, take it and talk about his portion. And then we're going to have a Q&A at the end for everybody's questions. So uh, once again, if you do have a question, go ahead and type it into the chat box and we'll get to you at the very end. Um, so Oregon State University was founded in 1868. It is uh, a world-renowned research institution, uh, regionally accredited by the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities. We are a land, sea, space, and sun grant research institution, uh, which makes us one of the only two in the nation. And we're a world leader in natural resources, conservation, biology, fisheries, and wildlife science, ecological engineering, and agricultural sciences, as the slide says. Um, we're also one of the nation's two fermentation science research programs. And another little tidbit that's not on this slide, which I think is kind of interesting, is we have research programs for all the basic ingredients for beer, including barley, hops, water, and yeast. So we are definitely a beer loving school in a positive sense, I guess. <laughs> um, the unit I work for is basically our continuing education unit. Uh, it's called Professional and Non-Credit Education. Um, and we strive to bring the best of Oregon State University to people of different ages and occupational backgrounds through quality continuing education programming, short courses, certificate programs, workshops like this craft brewery startup workshop and more. Um, we offer more than 100 courses and certificate programs developed by professionals in the field, all delivered in a format tailored to a student schedule, providing flexibility and access to a high quality education. So what this means is uh, we offer online and on-site courses. Uh, an on-site course example would be the Craft Brewery Startup Workshop. We also offer hybrid courses, so a combination of the two. Um, our audience ranges from people who are looking for professional development to hobbyists to K-12 K through 12 programming. Um, and we're also there for people looking for uh, continuing education units for their uh, professions. Um, enough about PE. Let's go on to the workshop. So 
sorry, I'm working from the PDF here. Um, so the workshop's gonna be taking place over the course of five days in Bend, Oregon from September 9th to the 13th. Um, and it is going to be a, a pretty unique offering in this sense uh, because we it's going to be an on-site. A lot of these courses tend to be online. Um, and uh, we have access to employees from uh, the Pacific Northwest, owned in Kasi Brewing Company. Um, there's going to be a total of eight employees there, including the owners, talking about their own experience, which I think makes it kind of a unique opportunity. You can see um, a couple of the testimonials from students below. Uh, we have 40 students coming from around the globe, and we do have um, three people on the wait list at the moment. Um, let's see. Two, one person's coming from Australia, one person's cr coming from the UK, and most are from all over the o from all over from the USA, not OSU. Sorry. Um, Bend, Oregon, is indeed a sun-drenched, beautiful place. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to a week there. It is also um, almost the capital of beer in Oregon. It's got 15 breweries out as of August 2013, and it has four new um, applications for licenses this year for breweries. So it definitely is a um, big time beer town and a big time um, outdoorsy uh, adventure place. Should be a lot of fun. Um, so the instructor is here. We have uh, Roger and Leo, are, uh, as Roger said, are gonna be talking about um, startup basics and business plan creation for the first two and a half days. And then uh, we're gonna have Matt Schinderman, who's gonna be talking about creating sustainability plans for uh, new breweries on uh, Wednesday. And then the final day and a half is going to be taught by Nikos Ridge and Jamie Floyd, the CEO, CEOs of Nikasi Brewery, along with a team of six of their employees. And they're gonna be talking about their personal experience um, with startup, growth, uh, building a company culture and HR issues. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you have seen the syllabus, which includes the pre-workshop pre assignments and readings. Um, it's really important that people come with kind of a sense of reality when they come to this workshop. So um, that was what the assignments were designed for. Uh, a lot of the, what we require the students to do when they first come in is talk about um, an elevator speech, an elevator pitch, sorry, and also, um, to talk about uh, what their venture is, how they're planning to make money, where it's going to be. I'll let Roger go into that in more detail. And the, the next two bullet points are interesting because within the craft brew industry, it's, it's really a burgeoning industry, um, especially in the US, but I think around the world. And um, it's really important that people have a realistic sense of what these industry trends are and recognizing the brewing opportunities in their own backyards. So that will definitely be covered um, extensively by Roger and also Ninkasi. Um, let's see, a couple more details on the course. And then the last bullet point, um, Ten Barrel Brewing Company is a uh, brewery based in Bend, Oregon, and it also, just like Ninkasi, it opened in 2006, and uh, it has a very different, basically, business plan and, and experience with startup. So that's going to be a feature that we're going to be, um, that we're going to implement on Tuesday. We're going to go to the brewery for dinner and have the owners talk to us about their own personal experience with startup. Uh, learning outcomes, um, you should gain a focus on environmental sustainability for, for breweries from Matt Schinderman on day three, um, understanding and successfully executing the steps it takes to open a brewery, at least have a better understanding of these. Um, and really, our, our biggest goal is probably to have a realistic startup business plan based on the input from instructors and course materials. And uh, there are going to be 40 students in the class again, so this is going to be a fantastic networking opportunity for, for attendees. And uh, the very the very final point, um, there is going to be, I guess, for lack of a better word, it would be a competition. Um, and the person who, the prize is a paid internship at Ninkasi Brewing Company. Um, the competition is whoever has kind of the most sustainable um, and best business plan. 
And just a few details on the internship. Um, it, the dates are flexible and um, even the focus of the internship is somewhat flexible. So it could be something that's more based on if you want to learn more about management skills or business skills, or if you want to learn more about brewery skills, brewing skills, rather. Um, so at this point, I'm actually going to hand it over to Roger so he can talk about his portion of the workshop. And um, Roger, just let me know when you want me to flip the slides, and I'll do that for you. Okay, sounds good. Well, I think when we looked at this, this workshop, it was important for us to really focus on the business aspects of this venture. Uh, the brewing aspects sounds like it looks like many people have some experience and those that don't, uh, Ninkazi as well as the other people in the class can provide a lot of insight to that. And so we really wanted to focus on making sure people understood what they needed to be doing in terms of their planning and we'll, really with a focus that I've used in the past of trying to help people understand what they don't know they don't know and go into their new venture with sort of eyes wide open to all of the risks, all of the things that can happen, all the things they need to plan for, and understand that they've got something that they feel comfortable can be executed, or give them a decision point at that point to say this isn't the right time or the right place, but here I've got this resource now available to me to make a choice at some point later down the line, and having that resource available to make that decision to say, yep, this is the time to do it. So let's talk a little bit about some of the details behind it. So if, uh, Hannah, you could go to the next slide. Okay. So we've focused, try to get the, the beginning to really think about sort of being an entrepreneur. And I think it's something that a lot of people sort of overlook, that this is a very different experience than somebody that might be used to a traditional job where you're an employee and you work for somebody else or work with other people. Because there's a lot of things there that become very different. And both Leo and I have experience in being entrepreneurs, but also working with lots of entrepreneurs. And so trying to give people a better sense of what it means to own and run a business that you're ultimately responsible for. And then sort of set the stage for, here's the components of the business plan. And to give you an overview of the things and, and not try to do it in terms of a checkbox, because you can certainly go out and there are numerous business plan forms. There are things you can get on the internet. You can buy books. You can buy templates that you can use. But ultimately, the business plan needs to be that living, breathing document that is your vision that includes the right things depending on the audience. So depending on how you're going to go about financing and so on, those things need to be in there. So to give you a framework to start out with, what we found is the biggest struggle is the next point, is trying to understand what does the market look like? Where are you going to be? What are you going to try to be selling? And who's ultimately going to buy it? And going through steps of trying to get data around that. Because if you look at the end is really the financial piece because it ties stuff together. People can start with the fixed costs and the costs of the variable costs. Those are are more of the easy things to do, but it's the revenue side that becomes very difficult to try to understand or estimate and to find data to back that up. So if you do need financing or you need to convince somebody, whether it be your family, your husband, your wife, your relatives to invest, that you've got something that has some information, has some data that is, is valid and fits what you're trying to accomplish. So there's going to be a big portion in the middle, and a lot of that's going to be working with computers, either computers for you to bring or we have access to a computer lab to do some of that research with a hands-on component of it. Then once that kind of gets determined in terms of what's possible, then we can start looking at different strategies that you can go about. There's a lot of different ways to implement a brewing venture. It can be purely wholesale. It can be nano. It can be a brew pub. There are a variety of different ways to implement that. And that's going to really help you once you understand the marketplace, determine where is your next step forward. Out of that, then, okay, are you going to be offering food? Are you going to be doing kegs? Are you going to be doing growlers? What are the types of particular products and services that people are going to be looking to buy from you? And some of that will also start to incorporate some of the costs, because in order to do that, it then has a cost that goes with it. So a lot of it is going to be developing what I refer to as the sources and uses of your initial investment funds, which is the sources, where you get the money, and then what do you have to buy? What do you have to get to be able to start to implement this to get revenue? And then that goes into operations and logistics and capacity. And with any of the brewery, and for any of those home brewers, they know that capacity is a big, big component of this. How many primary, how many secondary, all the types of things that are going to limit what you're going to be able to produce. And what's the logical break point for you to decide to start or where then becomes the expansion possibilities. And what we're also doing as part of this is I'm working with 
a couple uh, regional brewers that I know and have a, have a relationship with to get a sense of how their business plans worked out. And they have a variety of different ways they've done it. One started as a restaurant that turned into a nano that turned into a micro. Another one started out as basically a tap room and then turned into a, a wholesale. Another one is currently being built that's going to have the full brew pub brewery type of, of thing. So we'll be able to provide some of the reality of what they're experiencing or have experienced within that, especially in the operations, logistics, and capacity. A lot of questions always come up. Uh, Hannah pointed out that there's four that are in the licensing in Bend right now, that there's a lot of things to try to understand. We're trying to do our best to try to cover the spectrum, but there's so many regional and state differences. We're going to try to do what we can or at least find information of where you can go find that information. And also the simple things like what do I form this at uh, and go through the different benefits and, and downfalls of various ways that you can create a legal entity. Then pricing and marketing kind of go together in terms of where you can do within the area that you're at and how you're going to reach those people. Because the big thing here is just try to raise awareness that you're going to be a new venture. You're going to need to try to capture a market that's already either captured or is in some way not satisfied. How do you go about doing that? And that's one expense that a lot of people don't really look at to try to understand that there's a lot of money that needs to be spent in marketing, especially with a new venture. All of that then comes down to, can I get the money in some way, shape, or form to be able to do this? And so we'll look at some different scenarios around how to finance this venture and what ways you can go about doing that in the different combinations. You can't talk about a business plan without risks. And one of the oversights I typically see when working with entrepreneurs and their business plans is they only give one scenario, and it's an optimistic scenario. They need to understand where are things going to be sensitive, where are trends in the marketplace, where are things in terms of cost going to go, Back in, I don't remember exactly the year, but I, I know I in, incurred this problem with the hop shortage that we had based on the weather. And so a lot of the really hoppy beers were hard to come by because you simply couldn't get hops and they were rationing them based on the suppliers and wholesalers and so on. So those are types of risks that need to be understood or changes in the marketplace in general. Then some basics on accounting to get people familiar if they're not familiar with some of the business aspects because that really then plays into the, how the financial projections are developed to match up to things that you're ultimately going to measure yourself in terms of success. I find too many current entrepreneurs that come talk to me that really aren't keeping an eye on their metrics. They're not keeping an eye on the scoreboard. And that scoreboard isn't just for filing your taxes. It's a scoreboard that needs to be understood throughout the operation so that you can make adjustments based on inventory, staffing, all the different things that you can control how are you going to adjust those and understanding how to read that type of information? And then in the end, all of this kind of ties together into the financial projections. What's this going to look like a year from now, five years from now? What does it take to ha make it happen? What are the assumptions that you're going to make about that? I consider any bus good business plan to be 50% numbers, 50% words. You've got the words that describe how you got to those numbers. And so some of the people that I work with are very number like, oh, my goodness, can't deal with this. Well, fine, go ahead and write it out, and then let's figure out how that plays into the numbers. I'm very quantitative, so I think about the numbers and then try to explain how did I get to those numbers based on market feasibility, strategy, product, so on and so forth. So that's going to eventually tie all these things together and give you a chance to sort of use some of the templates we'll develop, um, the template we have, as well as other ones you might already have, to try to tie that together so that you've got that financial picture, and then you can look at some scenarios. There's a lot of stuff we're going to go through. We're going to try to do what we can to make a lot of one-on-one -on -one kind of coaching experiences. We're also going to count on the fact that we have a lot of expertise already going to be part of the class. And so there's going to be a lot of work done in small teams based on different, different attributes uh, associated with the venture, associated with the market, uh, associated with experience, so that you can learn from other people in addition to trying to learn from us. So that's kind of the general feel of what we're going to try to accomplish. All right, well, I can go ahead to the next slide. So crafting that business plan, this becomes that document that hopefully will be living and breathing and can allow you then to look at modifications and understand, okay, what does this look like now? What does this look like in the future? And do I have something that needs some adjustments or needs some change in the strategy? So the business plan is really that, that go-to document that's going to outline and give detail at the same time to that business venture. Next slide. The business opportunities, a lot of people go in with one level set, one mindset. I know for myself as having been a home brewer 
you get people raving that have never really looked at other types of beer styles. And all of a sudden they try something and they're like, wow, I've never knew that there was this beer style. One of the things that I do as a, a, a fundraiser for one of the groups I'm involved with is brew a batch of beer for somebody that wins it in an auction. And they, when they start to look at the opportunities that are beyond the shelf that they usually look at, they end up picking some very interesting ones that may not have explored. And so there are people out there that are doing that process right now for themselves, but there's also a lot of people that aren't going to be changed. They're going to be my best friend's dad that drinks hams on ice. Those are going to be some of the people that you may be trying to get to or not. And looking at how those opportunities evolve within your area, a place like Bend, you know they have opportunities because people are interested in beer. But there may be other places where you're not going to have that same level of beer understanding. And that can be what a lot of what you're going to be selling, actually, is understanding the variety of beer styles and what that means to somebody as they try different things. All right, next slide. So once you've got that sort of idea of where you're going to head, well, how do you go out and reach those people? How do you then also look at, in your business plan, what are the scenarios for growth? And it's tough sometimes to con convince yourself that you need to do that, but you've got to understand where is those capacity points, where is there going to be opportunities, and the flip side, where is there opportunities for somebody else to come in and take some of that marketplace that you're developing and understanding. So being ahead of the curve as well, because you'll see it, there are opportunities, but that means that there are other people looking at those opportunities and how to sort of keep your marketplace to yourself or keep that, that amount of people that are interested in your product or your service in a way that's useful for you to continue to be profitable. Okay, next slide. There's a lot of particular business laws. There are a lot of general business laws that people need to understand, even the arcane distribution that has to happen in terms of wine and liquor and spirits and the way that they were set up, and that's going to come from some of the early part of the history of brewing, is how do we get to this point? How do we get to this business model that exists? And how can you either take advantage of that or what are some things that are changing in terms of trends, in particular stuff like the micro distilleries and some of these other business laws, that are being changed to be more friendly to the craft brewing business where a lot of them were set up for more of the industrial brewing side of things and how that's going to impact some of your business model and that's an important part of, of understanding that component. Okay, next slide. All right, Hannah, I'm going to go ahead and pass this back to you then in terms of some of the, the closing things up here and then we can get into some questions. All right, thanks Roger. Um, Okay, so, sorry again, messing with the PDF. Um, so just a, just a last little note, uh, professional and non-credit education actually has a number of brewing courses that we do offer. Um, Craft Brewery Startup Workshop is um, designed, as we've talked about, for people who are interested in starting up their own brewery. Um, our other beer courses including, include brewing an analytics, sensory analyses, and beer proficiency. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the people who might be interested in these courses aren't interested in opening their own brewery. They just have um, different focuses to them. And you can find out more about all these offerings if you go to pne.oregonstate.edu um, and backslash beer. So that now I think I'm going to open the floor to questions. Um, I don't see anything yet in the text box, but if anybody has, I'm going to check the questions box as well. All right, I see Chris Morgan has introduced himself. Hi, Chris. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, if you do, feel free to go ahead and type in the chat box. Um, conversely, if you feel uh, more comfortable speaking, then um, I can go ahead and unmute you. Um, just let me know through the chat box. Um, yeah, so I, I did forget to mention that we will be sending these slides out to all the attendees. Um, so if you want to look over the slides a little bit more closely, um, you will have that at your disposal. Um, let's see. 
All right, well, if there are no questions, actually, I see a little. Oh, OK. Um, I see a question for Roger from Chris. Um, go ahead and. You know, I'm not able to see any of the okay. chat questions. I'm not sure exactly how to sure be thing, able so. to see that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and unmute, um, unmute you, Chris, and you can, if you don't mind, going ahead and just um, sharing it verbally. So now you're unmuted. Okay. Can you guys hear me? We can yep. hear you. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the, the typical oversight on the business plan where there's just the one scenario and it's typically an optimistic scenario. How many do you typically recommend in a business plan? For the working business plan, because you got to understand some of it is the audience. And so I like to start with the working business plan, which is really sort of the internal document. And you may end up choosing a scenario that you're going to go forward with if you need financing or working with investors. But I typically like to start, first of all, with the break even and not even worry about the market and say, okay, given the size, the structure, the cost that you're talking about, what do you really need to do to simply break even? And that's sort of the starting point, because that's easy if you've got all your costs pretty well squared away. Then based on your market feasibility, you kind of have that middle of the road one that says, this is really the likely scenario that I'm kind of expecting to happen with some of some pessimism involved with it in terms of not being too optimistic. But then you also, at a minimum, need the capacity. Okay, at what point, based on your structure, based on your product and services, do you run into, you just don't have enough space? Is it not enough space for beer, for people to eat, for parking? What is it that's going to be that, that capacity limiter? And once you've got those three, you can start to really look at how much room do you have. Because if your likely is really close to your break even, you really need to look at something. If it likely is close to the capacity, well, you probably need to look at a different size operation. So starting with a minimum of those three, and then depending on what you see in terms of the risks, deciding what else do I need to include here for myself? Is it something to do with pricing points in terms of raw materials, or is it purely to do with um, the right location? Because that might be a real killer in terms of rent or buying that all of a sudden is going to really impact your business plan. So those are the kind of the minimum I start with is the break even, the likely, and the capacity. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I see another question here from Dean, um, and he's just wondering if the workshop is available year-round or once a year. Um, it will be available once a year, so we'll be offering it again in uh, 2014, um, around the same time. Um, we haven't settled on the dates yet, but it should be around the September time, probably in Bend again. <clears throat> and if you are interested um, in, in hearing, uh, getting an early um, alert to the registration opening, then what I would do is go ahead and register for the course. And it is full at the moment, um, but we'll put you on the wait list. And everybody who's on the wait list this year for the course will end up getting uh, a week advance notice on when registration opens. So you can that too. You still have to register yourself next year, but you'll at least have that early warning. Um, let's see. Any other questions before? Yeah, well, um, if there are no further questions, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the session. Uh, thank you all for attending. Um, and as I said before, we'll go ahead and send these slides to you so you can look things over. Um, as you can see on the question slide, uh, our phone number is there as well as our email address. So if you have any questions after this, feel free to get in contact and we can give you some more information. All right, well, um, thank you so much and thank you, Roger, and hope you all have a great Wednesday. Take care. My pleasure. Hope to see uh, you all at the workshop or potentially next year.